What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. Uh, Dylan forgot to turn the TV on. But uh, this is a show where we take your user-submitted videos, email those in to formcheckfriday at gmail.com, uh, and we will take them. We randomly select some. We throw them up on this TV, and I tell you guys how you can lift more efficiently and ideally move a little bit more weight around. Our first submission today comes from Brogan. Now, Brogan's doing some squats, and we can see from this side angle here that A, they're a little bit high, and B, it looks like we're really kind of reaching and overextending, trying to stay super, super upright in the torso, which can sometimes be a bit counterproductive. Now, the two biggest things uh, that uh, I think you can do to fix those two faults uh, is number one, obviously just squat a little bit deeper, use a little bit less weight so you're comfortable and more confident getting down to proper depth. And number two, in terms of the overextension, try to keep those ribs tucked down. I know I say the cue a lot, but allow yourself to lean a little bit, especially with a, a sort of low bar position like you have. Let yourself lean forward, let yourself kick your hips back a little bit. Kind of sit into your hips a little on the way down. Uh, and I think not only is that gonna make it more comfortable for you to get depth, but it's also gonna allow you to be a lot more powerful and maintain a good position throughout your lift instead of being super extended and coming down and being flattened out and having that torso movement throughout the lift, which can kind of throw you off. So try those two things and hopefully that helps, man. The next set of squats we have here comes from Gabriel. Now, I wanna use Gabriel's video to illustrate a point that I think is worth talking about in these Form Check Friday videos, and that is Sometimes your technique breaking down is okay. I think a lot of times we can get really caught up in overanalyzing, uh, in worrying too much, in thinking too much about technique and how every single rep needs to be absolutely perfect. Uh, this is a new five rep max for Gabriel. And honestly, I think it looks fine. Given the intensity, given the circumstances around it being a, a new five rep max, uh, you know, sort of a max effort set, the last three reps, or the last two reps at least, get a little bit ugly. We start seeing a little bit of a squat morning, a little bit of looseness in the bottom, but that's okay. That's training, that's pushing hard. We're not always gonna be able to have immaculate, perfect technique. So let's just keep that in mind and try not to be overly critical. We wanna keep things within a healthy range, we wanna make sure things feel good, uh, but don't get overly picky with your lifts and regress for the sake of absolutely immaculate technique on every single rep. That's not to say that, let thing, that we should let things go out the window when we get heavy, but as long as we're within sort of an acceptable range of technique and things aren't just completely flying off the rails, you're keeping it between the ditches as they say, then just go ahead and lift. And that's also not to say that Gabriel did anything wrong by submitting this. That's not what I'm getting at. I just wanted to use this as an example of what I feel is an okay amount of breakdown on a very heavy, very taxing set. Now our next lifting video comes from Juan. Juan is doing some pin press here and as you can see he's chosen to start from the bottom of the pin press. This is not normally something I advocate. I feel like starting from the bottom of the pin press makes it really difficult to get a good setup and to be a little bit more transferable to our competition bench. We never start a bench from the bottom. Uh, so I think the value in starting from the bottom and having to set up with the bar already on your chest is maybe not cra uh, what it's cracked up to be or what you might think. Um, so, biggest pieces of advice for Juan is number one, if you can, and I'm, I'm not sure what your uh, equipment will allow. It looks like you're kind of training out of a, a garage gym there, uh, which is great. And I think that pin pressing from the bottom is better than, you know, not being able to bench press, for example. So if that's your only option for bench press, then keep on trucking, man. Uh, in terms of the execution of the lift, a couple things I'd probably recommend. So number one, let's try a little bit of a wider grip. Uh, it looks like you have a very, very long range of motion with your hands placed where they are, and I think it might be worthwhile to try a bit of a wider grip. Now, if the wider grip is totally uncomfortable, uh, if it hurts your shoulder, if it just feels way worse, then obviously that's not a route worth uh, progressing down, but I would like you to try that out and see how it feels. Minimizing the range of motion a little bit can sometimes be advantageous. The next big thing I'm noticing is you're picking your head up on the way down 
Now to me, this is super counterintuitive unless you're an equipped lifter. I understand why equipped lifters lift their head up because it lets some of the slack out of the shirt. You can kind of collapse and get that touch a little bit easier. And then when you throw yourself back onto the bench, it kind of tightens the shirt back down. Now for a raw lifter, this has never ever made sense to me. Uh, because essentially what you're doing is you're loosening as you get down to the chest. You're loosening your back, uh, you're, you're, you're stretching your traps and you're stretching out some of those muscles of the upper back that should be remaining very, very tight as you come down. So try to keep your head glued down to the bench so you can keep those shoulder blades glued down, keep that chest nice and high, and that ideally or should allow you to maintain a better position throughout the lift. Our next video is some deadlifts and they come from India. This guy's name is Shaminder, uh, and he sent in his deadlift videos. Looks like he's doing some pause deadlifts here. And there's a couple of things going wrong. So number one, with the setup, uh, you can see that Shaminder's back is kind of curling. His hips are underneath him. Uh, and what we ideally want to get is a much more sort of neutral range spine. So what I'd like for you to do, Shaminder, is when you're setting up for your deadlift, I want you to try to create more tension through the glutes and hamstrings by extending that low back and thinking about pushing your butt out behind you instead of setting it underneath you. So if we can get that little bit of extension in the back, we're gonna probably uh, feel a little bit more tension, a little bit more stretch in the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads, all those things. That's very good, that's what we're looking for. Now, the other thing we wanna make sure we're doing before we initiate the lift is what's called pulling the slack out of the bar. So if you can set your upper back as a part of setting your back flat, and pull yourself down into position. I think there's a big difference between people who just kind of sit down into position in the sumo deadlift and people who really pull and lever themselves against the bar. If you do this right, a light weight should actually float off the floor. So in your warm-ups, if you're noticing the bar is starting to come up off the floor before you start the deadlift, then you're pulling the slack out of the bar correctly. Hopefully that helps you, Schminder. Now our last submission for today comes from Adam Conrad. Now Adam as well is doing some sumo deadlifts and Adam does a really good job of achieving what I consider a neutral spine. The thing Adam's not doing very well and that I'd like for you to work on man is pulling the slack out of the bar. So very much we're getting into a good position but there's no tension on the bar before you start. So when you pull we're seeing those shoulders roll forward, we're seeing the, the shoulder blades pulled out of position, a little bit of rounding in the upper back and eventually with heavier weights this is going to lead to the bar drifting away from your center of gravity which is going to cause you a number of deficiencies in your movement and a number of, uh, or sorry, it's going to cause you some inefficiency in your deadlift. What I would recommend is really drive those shoulder blades down your back. Try to get those lats tight. Um, one thing that I try to tell lifters is imagine you're pinching your armpits shut to set your lats as well. Sometimes a little bit of external rotation in the shoulder, uh, in the humerus rather, can uh, help you set that lat tension and get, get that feeling of tightness in the upper back by pointing the elbows towards the back of the room behind you. Uh, sometimes that can be a really sort of breakthrough cue for a lot of people in terms of setting tension in the lats and the back before you start. Now, just like I told Shaminder, make sure you're pulling yourself into that nice position that you're creating. Uh, you're getting into a really good position, but there's no tension on the bar. So tension into the bar before you initiate the pull, and I bet you those are gonna look and feel a lot better. And that's it for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you're interested in a free form check, go ahead and submit to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. For anybody who's interested in a paid form check, it is something that we offer at calgarybarbell.com in our coaching, uh, coaching shop. And with the paid form check, you get uh, a detailed analysis of your lifts, a bunch of cues that can help you fix it. You get recommendations for training both accessory and supplemental movements that can help you increase your proficiency, skill, and strength in these lifts. As well, you'll get a uh, uh, individual video from myself or one of our coaches detailing all of these things and kind of talking you through it, making cool hand gestures and stuff as I'm known to do. So if you're interested in a more detailed breakdown of your lifts, go ahead and check out the calgarybarbell.com coaching shop for a paid form check. That's always an option. Uh, that's it for me though. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, like I said, if you're interested in getting uh, featured on the show, formcheckfriday at gmail.com. We'll see you guys in the next video.